This guy got invisibility powers and has other plans. Meet Cecilia Cass. She's one of those people who wait for 3 a.m. to sneak into the kitchen for a guilty snack. Relatable. She gets a pack of sleeping pills out of her mattress and checks a glass of water to ensure her husband Adrian has drank enough of it. Whoa, that's some precaution to eat Twinkies. What can I say? Some people love eating alone. I love eating alone too. Actually, it's the only way I eat. Cecilia spills the drugged water out and gets to a wardrobe where she already has a hidden bag with everything she needs for a long, faraway trip. Money, passport. Wait, so it's not a midnight trip to the kitchen? Is she going to a gas station for a hot dog? She turns the house camera on Adrian just to make sure she gets back home before the boring husband wakes up. He prefers sleeping at night. What a nerd. Then she gets in a basement slash working office of her husband. Adrian Griffin is a genius scientist who works on an invisible suit. Hmm, this sounds familiar. Is he obsessed with clapping too? Or is he just abusive and violent? We'll see. Of course, I'm referring to the original movie, which I also covered. This is a remake. Anyways, Cecilia turns off all the cameras at the house and sets the alarm off. On her way out, she accidentally hits the dog's bowl, but Adrian is too drugged to hear it. Cecilia dresses up and is ready to roll when their dog rolls out. Sorry, buddy. I can't take you with me. She at least gets him free from the shock on his neck. Then, the doggy accidentally hits the car and the alarm goes off. Oops. Adrian wakes up. Now you must take him with you. But Cecilia is riding solo, so she runs away jumping the stone fence. She runs through the forest to a road where her sister Emily should meet her, but the sis is getting late. Finally, Emily comes and Cecilia gets in the car. A pack of sleeping pills accidentally falls from her bag. No time to pick it up. Adrian is approaching. The man is so mad that the girl went for hot dogs without him that he smashes the car window. Understandable. Adrian picks up the pack off the floor. You'll pay for this. Almost stole diazepam from me, you naughty girl. Two weeks pass and Cecilia is hiding at the home of her sister's husband, James, and their daughter, Sydney. We learn that Adrian was an abusive husband and Cecilia tried to leave him for ages, but he never let her go. Now, Cecilia suffers from mental problems. For example, she's afraid to step outside. Relatable. I haven't left my house in years, but I wouldn't call it a problem. One day she walks out of her house, but a random runner scares the crap out of her. Yeah, I hate those guys too. Thinking they're gods because they wake up at 4 a.m. to run, Emily rolls over and Cecilia gets furious. What are you doing here, Emily? Adrian could be following us. Well, he can't when he's dead. He self-deleted. This doesn't make any sense to Cecilia. Adrian loved to control everything, especially her. The way she dressed, what she ate, what she did, and he couldn't control the rope? Whatever. What's important is that now he's gone. Cecilia can now walk out of the house with no fear. Turns out, Adrian left the final wish before his death. Cecilia and Emily meet Adrian's brother slash attorney, Tom, who will read it. Besides an urn of ash and an angry statement about Cecilia leaving him, Adrian left five million to his ex-wife. She will be paid a hundred grand each month unless she commits a crime or becomes mentally sick. Wow, what a surprising and generous gift. That's what toy review YouTubers make. Cecilia uses the money to buy her sister's family a new ladder. Whoa, that's so kind of you. Hope your five million dollar check won't get light from it. Oh wait, it's just a setup. Cecilia paid tuition at Parsons for Sydney. Let's celebrate. Enjoying her new fancy clothes, Cecilia's in her room when she hears some weird noises behind her. Don't worry, if Adrian's ghost wanted to haunt you, he wouldn't have left you five million. The following day, Cecilia is cooking breakfast when suddenly a fire starts. Sydney stops it with a fire extinguisher. Looks like my regular meal. It's afternoon, and again Cecilia hears some noises, like something or someone is watching her. She goes out to check the hall, but no one is there. The guest room is empty too. Cecilia turns on the lights to check the kitchen. Suddenly, the door outside of the house opens. Spooky. We see a cloud of air going out of her mouth, and behind her, Wait, maybe that's some other gas going out of her body. Let's assume that for the sake of our nervous system and just for lols. Cecilia gets inside the house and goes to bed with Sydney. Yeah, I guess money can buy you clothes and tuition, but not a mattress. Something pulls the blanket off the girls and then flashes the room taking photos, making Cecilia wake up. Boo! Cecilia sees a mannequin staring at her, if a mannequin could stare. She picks up the blanket and hears somebody sitting on a chair. She covers it with the blanket, nothing there. Then she pulls it back, but something stops it, like two invisible legs standing on it. Then those legs approach her. Cecilia Cecilia screams, waking up the whole house. James runs into the girl's room, and Cecilia explains that she saw something. Don't let Adrian hide you, says James. What could he be, invisible? Let's go ahead and settle down that imagination, shall we? The next day, Cecilia goes for a job interview. Everything is great until the interviewer asks for a portfolio. Cecilia opens her sketchbook, but it's empty. I know I put it there, she says. Well, that strategy worked for me and my homework in school, and works okay for the girl too. The interview continues, but Cecilia gets too intense and loses her conscience. Relatable. Do the same to skip tests. The hospital doctor says Cecilia is fine, proving my theory she faked it. Girls do that sometimes. Docs will call her with some blood test results. Back at home, she gets a call from the doc who says Cecilia fainted because of diazepam's huge dose. Wait, what? I never used it. Then she finds a pack of it on the bathroom floor, almost empty and with Adrian's bloody fingerprints. Thinking she got all the evidence in the world, Cecilia takes James and goes to Tom, confronting him about Adrian. Tom believes a pile of ash is solid proof his brother is dead. Well, he's a scientist, a world expert in optics. Maybe he could indeed find a 
wait to become invisible. Tom tries to calm Cecilia, who is also the victim of Adrian, and Tom was happy when he heard Adrian was dead. Then he shows some photos of his body. Don't let him get stuck in your head, Cecilia. It's hard when he's stuck on your bedsheets, but what else can we do? Cecilia goes to visit Emily, but Sis is extremely mad at her. Seems like Cecilia sent her an email telling her to get out of her life, calling her bad words. Come on, Emily. She stands right before you, not understanding what you're talking about. It's 2022 and a six-year-old could hack her laptop and send you this. It's not that crazy that she didn't send those messages. And in fact, Adrian did it. Sadly, Emily doesn't believe in ghosts sending spam emails. Cecilia returns home, reads the email someone sent on her behalf, and then cries on the floor. Next time, don't open any links from a Nigerian prince who wants to send you an inheritance. I learned that one the hard way. Sydney comes into the room, cheering her up. Bam! Right in the face. Sydney is scared and calls her dad. She thinks Cecilia hit her. Well, they were miles away from each other, but who else could do it? Not some mad scientist with an invisibility suit, right? James and Sydney run away, and Cecilia is left alone. Or is she alone? She gets a knife, spills some chocolate on the floor of her room so she can see the footsteps and waits. Hours pass and she starts talking with Adrian. Why me? Why not any other woman on earth? You're rich and powerful. Why me? Hey, Adrian, I agree with the girl on this one. An hour in a club could bring you more joy than a week of this spooky ghost thing you're doing now. Well, different strokes for different folks, I guess. Then, Cecilia makes a brainiac move. She calls Adrian's phone and hears it ringing somewhere up. She goes to investigate the rooftop, calls the phone again and finds it. There's some photos of her sleeping with Sydney too. Yeah, this Adrian guy is a real jerk. She also finds a knife in her sketch book that she forgot at the job interview. These annoying ghosts. Suddenly, she gets a message saying, surprise. Well, not a surprise when she found your hiding spot, Brainiac. Sydney grabs a knife and tries to get down. Suddenly, she grabs a can of white paint, spills it, and sees Adrian. Surprise. Well, she sees someone wearing the invisibility cloak. Whether it's Adrian or Harry Potter, we don't know. But the latter lives under the stairs, not under the roof. Now, the spooky guy definitely got spooked. Cecilia goes down and hears water getting turned on in the kitchen. Adrian got the paint off his costume. Can't win a fight without being invisible? loser. Realizing he's acting like a baby, Adrian goes straight to the action, choking Cecilia and throwing her around. The fight with the shadow continues for a moment, then Cecilia runs away and orders Uber. It's a long trip, back to Adrian's house. Everything looks packed, like someone has moved out, or someone died. At least the doggy is alive. How did it last that long alone? Cecilia gets down to the basement and finds the room with the invisible costume. She enters the room, presses the button, and the suit appears. Suddenly, doggy gets spooked and runs away. Cecilia gets the suit off the mannequin. Then we see something walking on the floor. Actually, we hear it. Cecilia runs back from the basement with a costume in her hands, hides it, and herself in a wardrobe. Something opens the wardrobe door and steps in, and Cecilia uses the moment to run away. Doggy barks at Adrian, stopping him for a moment so Cecilia can run away and drive off. This Uber driver deserves a good tip. Cecilia sets up a meeting with Emily. The girls enjoy tap water, then Cecilia starts telling her about the suit she found. Then, a knife appears in the air, cuts Emily's throat, and lands right at Cecilia's hands. Wow, that was fast. Now good luck explaining that invisible cloak story to the cops. Cecilia gets dragged into a police station, slash mental hospital, desperately trying to explain that Adrian killed her sister. Doctors drug her and she falls asleep. Before passing out, she hears Adrian saying, surprise. Yet again, bro, it's not a surprise. Cecilia gets interrogated by James, who is also a cop. Cecilia says she can prove that Adrian is alive, but she can't say how because Adrian is listening right now. Oh sure, this will work. No one's gonna call you crazy. Back in her cage, Cecilia finds out some great news. She's pregnant. Then Tom rolls in to bring some more news. Since you've committed a crime and are mentally handicapped, you cannot get my brother's money anymore. Pity. Tom gets a file that Cecilia should sign to give up the money. Under the file, we can see a note. Don't draw on the table. Use paper. Then Tom offers a deal. Keep the baby and return to Adrian. As if killing your sister and going to a mental hospital didn't happen. Sounds like a fantastic deal. But Cecilia denies it and throws Tom's paper out of the desk. While Tom gets distracted, she steals a pen from his case. Then she grabs a chewing gum that holds a piece of paper on the table. In her cage, Cecilia gets searched and then left alone. She goes into a shower cabin and sticks her pen to the ceiling with a piece of gum. Whoa, some saw shank moves. Will you open the door now or start digging the tunnel? Nah, self-deletion. She opens the shower, opens the pen, and massages her veins with it. You won't get my baby, she screams when suddenly Adrian stops her. That's what she waited for. Immediately, she goes berserk, stabbing him. Ouch, it's painful, but it would take a whole day to kill him with a pen. So they start fighting. A guard breaks in and sees Adrian. His suit is lagging now. They start fighting, but Adrian uses his horrible ping to tase at the guard. Cecilia runs away but gets stopped by the other two guards, who try to drag her back to her room when Adrian appears, clapping them both more appear and get eliminated. Then two more. Can't you get the whole squad of the damn place at once? 
Adrian runs away, but Cecilia grabs a gun and follows him. They run outside and Cecilia shoots at Adrian. Unfortunately, she has the aim of a stormtrooper. She searches for him in a parking lot and finds an open car. When Adrian appears and grabs Cecilia by her throat, he promises not to hurt her, but he will hurt those she loves. Sydney, for example. Another guard appears and gets shot. Adrian runs away. Cecilia grabs a gun and chases him. Adrian takes a car and drives away, causing a car accident for a random cool-looking Asian guy. Poor fellow just got his car stolen. What a night. Cecilia follows Adrian, calling James and asking him to come back home to Sydney. Meanwhile, Adrian sneaks into Sydney's house, but the girl is ready for it. She has a gas balloon. You see, she's open-minded about ghosts and sprays the whole thing right in front of her. It works. Adrian gets stunned and Sydney manages to run away for a moment until Adrian catches her. James gets home right in time. Poor fellow is probably waiting to see crazy Cecilia, but a ghost punching him was a real surprise. James gets knocked out when Cecilia arrives. Surprise! She flamethrowers Adrian and then shoots him until he dies due to death. She gets the mask off the ghost and it's Tom, not Adrian. The SWAT team rolls over to Adrian's house and finds a man screaming for help in the basement. It's beaten and tied up Adrian. James breaks the news to Cecilia, but she doesn't believe it. She believes Adrian set this whole thing up to make her look crazy. What can I say? You didn't trust her at first, but you should definitely give her a shot now. The ghost killing others was real. Why can it not be Adrian? Well, at least now Cecilia is free. She decides to take it into her own hands and calls Adrian for a meeting. They enjoy dinner together. Adrian looks pretty nervous. Not typical for him. I mean, usually he's just chill. So chill you can barely see him or not see him at all. Cecilia demands a truth. If Adrian wants to be a part of her baby's life, he has to admit everything he did to Cecilia. But Adrian keeps playing the victim role like Tom controlled him. That's not what she needed. She needs a confession because she is wired. And James is listening to the whole conversation. Cecilia cries. Adrian comforts her. Actually, accidentally throwing a surprise word, or was it intentionally, to make her feel crazy. Cecilia goes to the bathroom and Adrian waits for her return. Slice. Adrian down. The poor fella didn't learn how to use knives properly. Cecilia comes out of the bathroom, shocked to see Adrian dying on the floor, and calls 911. James rushes inside. She keeps acting while the house camera stare at her, then goes into a black spot and breaks the acting. Calmly, she sits in a chair enjoying Adrian's slow death, saying, surprise, what a stupid and annoying word it is. Cecilia goes out and meets James, who sees an invisibility suit in her bag, and realizes everything but plays along. Well, he killed your wife after all. Finally, Cecilia can take a breath of freedom. Lesson learned. More of the story? There's way cooler things you can do when you're invisible.